Hello and welcome to the program Church in Focus. Yemi Balogun is my name. And you know what? Please get your pen and paper ready because I said to you, <laughs> we're going to bring you, <coughs> be bringing you hard hitters, people that are really doing the work in this kingdom, unashamed of the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Because I'm about to introduce to you two very wonderful people. The Bible says, I know a man in the spirit. And this couple are people that I know in the spirit, sold out to the things of the kingdom. Get ready. Because the pastor is by the name, Pastor Alex Jesse. And he's actually the senior pastor of Highway of Holiness Christian Love Center in Tottenham. And he's here with his beautiful wife, Pastor Mrs. Dockers, Jesse. You know what? Whatever you do, don't touch that dial. God bless you. Welcome to the program, sir and madam. Welcome, Welcome my brother. Thank you. It's good to see you both, and you're yes. looking well. Thank good God to for see that. You too. Praise God. And I really thank God for your lives, for what God is using you guys to do. Amen. And Amen. Uh, I, I get challenged by your kind of ministry. Mm. Because guess what? Before this program started, yes. I was talking to one of our crew. And, he, and he's an English guy. Yeah. Mm. And guess what he said to me? Because when he saw what you're doing, when he saw the clip you brought about the homeless, then he said to me, he said, he said, what about the big churches? <laughs> what are they doing? I don't see them do this. I said, that's where, that's where the problem is. Mm. You don't see them do this, but it's the small churches that are doing it. And that's why we've got to thank God for your lives. Amen. And he said, does it mean that those big churches, when they die, they go to hell? I said, well, some might end up in hell <laughs> as a result of not doing hmm. what they're supposed to do. Because Jesus said it in the book of yes. Matthew. Yeah. He says, when I was hungry, he did not feed me. I was homeless. He didn't bother. Hmm. He said, get away from me, you workers of iniquity. And that's what Derek Prince said in one of his books. He said, some people will be sent to hell for something they have not done. Hmm. So, you know, a lot will go to hell for sinning, for doing something hmm. wrong. He said, but some will go. For not for something they have not done, done. Mm. <laughs> so thank you so much for coming over today and it's great to have you in the studio Amen. so thank pastor you. alex how did the church started you know the, the, the church itself how did it start uh the church uh, started about 15 years ago when the lord led us um to start this ministry um with the emphasis of reaching our community and um we we started with that emphasis and that emphasis is something we've kept ever since and so when we started, uh, we, we've always been in Tottenham. That's where we've been, uh, building up the saints of God in, in the word of God and, and uh, discipling them, maturing them in, uh, into the ministry. And, and we've been able to reach our community through various means. For example, we started a supplementary school where we helped young people uh, who were in education from 6 to 16 in maths, English, science, and ICT. And we did that for all these years. Now, a lot of them have come through. They finished their university education. Some have done their masters. Uh, we've got people who have finished uh, their law degrees. Wow. My own daughter has finished, and she came through that. And, and so it's been, it's been an exciting experience to see those young people grow up. And, 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 and come to that place of seeing that God has been part of their educational mm -hmm. process and, and they appreciate what God, what God has done. And, and so we did that and then we moved on to youth uh, personal development because we realized that when the young people get into their teenage years, uh, you know, things begin to change. And so we went into youth personal development where we help them in character building, self-esteem, uh, interpersonal skills, career development, and things like that. Uh, and so that helped them in their development. And then we did what we call, which we still do, these are things we still do. Uh, we, we do the uh, youth cafe. And now with the youth cafe, young people finish school, they come after school, we give them subsidized food, they have games they play like table tennis, pool, all these uh, uh, computer games. And then the second half of the evening, we move into the personal development session where they, they meet and, and, and they are developed. We give them opportunity to make presentations to their peers. Uh, they can choose any subject of their choice. They can use a PowerPoint presentation or they can stand and speak to their peers. The whole idea is to develop their confidence, uh, to build them up so that when they get out there, they have the confidence to achieve. 
And so these are all things that we do. And then we moved it to a bigger forum because God said we should take it to a wider audience. And, and in order to take it to a wider audience, we had to use the media. And so we started a, this youth TV talk show called Keep It Real, which we've run for the last seven years. Uh, it's been showing on OBE TV for, for all these years. And, and, and Keep It Real gives young people the opportunity to uh, talk about issues that concern them. So they pick an issue and they research it. They go on the streets with their cameras. They sample public opinion, bring it into the studio, and then it's played in the studio. They have a discussion around it. And then uh, there is an aspect on the subject that comes into the studio to, to give their input. And then uh, they can ask them questions. And after that, somebody will come and give an advice. And at the end of it, there will be a, a young person, a group of young people who will come and uh, do a dance, a poetry, or a song in relation to the topic. And this has been very, very helpful uh, in reaching a lot of young people, both in the UK, across Europe, and North Africa. And we got a lot of calls, especially from Europe, from places like Italy and Germany, where they, they, they watch OBE TV a lot. Uh, and so uh, we've seen God use the ministry to touch the lives of, of these young people. And, and, and this has been the road that we've traveled. Uh, and and of rec recently, we came across, uh, during one of our evangelistic outreaches into our community, uh, we came across uh, two homeless people that uh, led us into the project that we are doing now. Uh, uh, but uh, I'll leave that to my wife to talk about it because uh, she was actually the person uh, that, that you know, met them for the first time. Uh, uh, one year, nine months ago. So well, I, I, I'll leave so, it to her to... So to one year, nine months ago, the project started? Yeah, the homeless project. Homeless project? Yes. Okay. God, for this opportunity... Um, there was a few group of us who used to meet Saturday mornings to pray mm. at church. And there was a time we had the direction to go out into the streets early in the morning. So we, we prepare some cup of tea, you know, put some sandwich together, and we go to the local streets in our area just looking for people, homeless people, to feed them. Sometimes when we go, it turns out good. Sometimes we roam about all, uh, the whole of the area. We can't find anybody. So we bring back <laughs> the food that we've prepared. And I believe that, you know, God is a God who, who knows the heart. So this time, the evangelism team decided to go out one Saturday to, you know, as usual, to share tracts and tell people about Christ. So on our way going, you know, we went to the, the shopping center, we spoke to people. Then all of a sudden, you know, I told the group that I need to go back to church. I don't know for whatever reason that made me to say that, but I believe it's God. So on my way going, which was, it's, it was just me going from, you know, the shopping center back to the church. And on the way, I just, you know, my, my eyes just went to these two guys sitting somewhere, you know, drunk, dirty, you know, with their tatty uh, clothes. I just you know, realize myself that I've been directed to them. So I went to them and I spoke to them. And for, for, for them to, you know, receive what I said, I, I spoke to them about the need that, that, that they had. I told them, you know, we, we are a church just around the corner there. We feed people, we have a shower coming, come and wash yourself and I'll feed you as well. So immediately I, I said that. You know, the first time I think they've heard about Jesus, they've heard about the gospel, but 
there wasn't any, you know, substance in yeah. terms of what they needed. So immediately I said that one of them put their drink down and just looked up to me. And, and, and the Holy Spirit was just telling me that that's what you've hit. You, you, you've hit something that, you know, this guy wanted to know and wanted to hear. So I, I, I could sense that they were receiving what I said. Later on, as I was speaking to them, I saw the group coming. And at that time, you know, I realized they were receiving everything that, you know, was going on between me and them. I called the rest of the group and they came in. So we told them everything about salvation and we prayed for them, which they received it. Then I was holding uh, the church track and I gave to them and told them, you know, this day, come, I'll meet you. You see my husband there, just give him this track and tell him that it's me that gave you and this is what we are doing. So when we came back, I just told pastor, this is what, you know, it's happened out there. At that time, we didn't have the shower, but if God says it is going to be done, he knows the way and how, you know, to, to make all these things come to reality. So by the time they came, I think a week or two, we've changed one of the toilets to the shower. So when they came, they, they had their uh, food, they sat down with pasta, and <laughs> it went on and on, and the rest is history. Wonderful. Mm. Yeah. And I really thank God for your life, for being so sensitive <laughs> to the Spirit of God. Yes. And we were talking earlier, yeah. mm. your, your approach is different yes. from the approach of some other churches. Mm. Thank God for churches that reach out to the homeless. Some, like a friend of mine who came yesterday, mm. they now have over, from about 10 homeless people initially, they have about 200 people mm. coming mm. for breakfast every yeah. Sunday. Mm. They feed them and then you know, minister to them and then they release back onto the streets. Mm. But in your case, they come and stay with you on the premises. Can you yes. elaborate on that? Yeah, basically what happened, they came that day, they showed me the truck and they said, your wife said we should come. <laughs> and so I let them in, and I, these guys were absolutely drunk, having had their bath for months, stinking. Brought them in, sat with them, spoke with them. And of course, the need was great. Uh, nowhere to sleep, no food, you know, no hygiene facilities, you know. And so we said, let's start from a comfortable place, and we will feed them. We know, at least we know about food. Let's start from there. So we started to feed them two, three times a week. And then from there, uh, they said, look, we are a bit uh, uneasy about going into public places because of the way we smell. Uh, we, we need a place to bath, and the only place we can go is somewhere in London Bridge in the city mm. uh, for homeless people, but we don't have the fare to get there either. And of course, we didn't have a, a shower in our church, uh, and so we, we were contemplating how to go about it. Uh, eventually, we realized that unless we do something drastic, nothing will happen. And so we decided to take one of the toilets out and convert it.